Hi everyone, welcome to Bonnie Carolee Makes Cards. I have a fun stenciling technique today. Rather than applying the ink, we're going to be lifting it off. My cards feature stencils from Simon Says Stamp, floating leaves, a stamp timber exclusive, and an older stencil, Peony Bouquet. We'll get started with the two cards with the pretty floral design. This pair of cards is exactly the same except for the colors that are used and the orientation. I'll go back and forth between these two cards as I progress through the steps of making them. I begin with an ink blended background on Bristol Smooth cardstock using Distress Oxide inks. For this card I'm working with Seedless Preserves, Festive Berries and Worn Lipstick. I use tape on my media mat to hold the stencil in place. Now begins the process of removing the ink that we have applied. Because the Distress Oxide inks are water-based and have a long drying time, they are a good choice for this technique. Although I'm using a baby wipe to remove the ink, a dampened paper towel would work just as well. Bristol Smooth cardstock can withstand a small amount of water without peeling and warping. The baby wipe seems to have the right amount of moisture and so that would be the aim if you use a paper towel. I removed some ink outside of the stencil and so I just go in with my blending tool and fix that up. Next I'm painting in the centers of the flowers. I'm working with gouache paint which is an opaque watercolor. I won't have to worry about the ink bleeding through and discoloring the white stamens. I'm using a small water brush to get fine lines. To create the dot detail on the stamens, I simply flip my water brush around to the other end, dip it in the paint, and then apply it. The amount of pressure applied results in varying sizes of dots. As we continue in this process, I am going to switch over to the second card, and so we'll mention the colors that were used in the background. Ice, Spruce, Picked Raspberry, and Shaded Lilac. White Mission Gold watercolor is applied to just the petals of the flowers, not the leaves. The paint is watered down and just helps to brighten the overall look of the flower. The sentiment for both of the cards is heat embossed with white embossing powder. I always test for dryness when I'm working with Distress Oxide inks. Before stamping, I put a little bit of embossing powder on the panel and make sure that it will knock off easily. I also apply anti-static powder before stamping just to make sure that that embossing powder is going to stick just to the sentiment. To give the sentiment just a little bit of dimension on this one layer card, I heat emboss it twice. For the second card, I also choose the sentiment piece, but in a different font. These sentiments come from an older stamp set by Simon Says Stamp called Big Piece. I don't believe that this stamp set is still available. Of course, any sentiment would work well. To apply the spatter, I go back to the same paint that was used for the stamens, the white opaque watercolor gouache. The gouache is watered down slightly and I use a small paintbrush to achieve a fine spatter. The panels for both of these cards have been trimmed down to 4 inches by 5 and a quarter inches and mounted on white sheet foam. To create a double layered dimensional white frame for the main panel to sit on, I trimmed a piece of white cardstock to 4 and an eighth inches by 5 and 3 eighths inches. It was also mounted on white sheet foam. When attached to the A2 size card base, the double frame steps up getting an eighth of an inch smaller each time. This provides a pretty detail, albeit a subtle one. This card features Simon Says Stamps floating leaves with sentiments from Just Miss You. 
The background for this card was ink blended again using Bristol Smooth cardstock with Distress Oxide inks, Broken China, Cracked Pistachio, and Speckled Egg. For this card, the ink is applied diagonally. After applying several layers of ink working back and forth and extending one color into the next, I then move on to stenciling. For this card, I did not want to use the entire stencil. I began by masking two of the leafy images. I positioned the mask so that the leaves would come up diagonally from the corner of the panel. A baby wipe was used to remove the ink. Before moving on to the third leaf, I first applied Gina K's Glitz Glitter Gel. The gel dries clear, leaving a nice sparkly finish. Before moving on to the third leaf, the panel is left to completely dry. The stencil is masked so that there is one leaf that will fit into that bottom left hand corner of the panel. Following the same process, the ink is removed with the baby wipe and glitter gel is applied. Again, the panel is left to completely dry before I work on the sentiment. The secondary sentiment from Simon Says Stamps, Just Miss You, is applied with black VersaFine ink. Because VersaFine ink takes a while to dry and I want my main sentiment to be embossed, I leave it to dry completely. In the meantime, I begin assembling the cart. The main panel has been die cut with the second largest die in my favorite things, Stitched Rectangles Stacks 2. It is adhered to white sheet foam. As with the other two cards, this card will have a double frame as well. White cardstock was die cut from the largest of the Stitched Rectangles die set and also mounted on white sheet foam. The layers were mounted on an A2 size card base, creating a stepped up 1 8 of an inch double frame. The main sentiment from Simon Says Stamps, Just Miss You, is embossed with white embossing powder. I masked off the secondary sentiment just in case that VersaFine ink was not completely dry. Typically, I would not do anything heat related on a foam backed panel, but my heat tool does have a lower heat setting. The card was finished up with a few embellishments using Nouveau Glitter Drops White Blizzard. For my final card, I've created a fun shaker element. For the blended background, the Distress Oxide inks are applied randomly on Bristol Smooth cardstock. This is an A2 sized card. I am working with Abandoned Coral, Wilted Violet, Fossilized Amber, and Carved Pumpkin. I continue to layer on and extend the color until I have a nice smooth autumn blend. Simon Says Stamps Floating Leaf Stencil is positioned over the panel and held in place with some tape. The ink is removed using a baby wipe. As with all the cards, I do not apply a lot of pressure during this process. Next, I apply Gina K's Glitz Glitter Gel. The panel is set aside to completely dry. It is then die cut using the shadow die from Simon Says Stamps Sending Smiles die set. From the shadow cutout, the script Sending Smiles was also die cut. To create the shaker element, Two pieces of sheet foam the same size of the panel are stacked together and taped in place. The die and the panel are positioned on top to get everything aligned for die cutting. The die is held in place with some tape and run through the die cutter. I thought I would be left with an impression on the second foam so that I could die cut that one, but it actually die cut through both sheets at once. The two sheets of foam with the shaker pocket are glued together and left to dry. Glue is applied around the opening to attach the acetate. 
When applying the glue, I leave a little bit of room around the opening so that the glue will spread onto the foam and not the acetate window. The foam stack and the panel are glued together. I let them dry under the weight of my Misty and work on my sentiment. I like to use Tombow glue when attaching an element onto acetate. Small dots of Tombow glue are applied to the sentiment which is set aside to completely dry. Dried Tombow is tacky and repositionable for a period of time. While it is drying, I prepare a small panel for the sentiment strip across the miles. It was ink blended with carved pumpkin and fossilized amber. The sentiment was stamped with black onyx versifying ink and then die cut using Simon Says Stamps sentiment labels. I use this die set all of the time and consider it a staple in my craft room. Next I add the shaker material to the pocket. I use a combination of seed beads and sequins. White cardstock is cut to the same size as the shaker panel and adhered to the back of it. Again, as I apply glue around the opening of the shaker, I leave some room for that glue to spread, but I also make sure that there are no gaps. The Tombow is now dry on the sentiment and I can apply it to the acetate. I do not have to worry about that glue smudging on the window. The shaker, a completely independent panel, is then attached to an A2 sized card base. I found the sentiment strip to be a little bit brighter than I wanted it to be and ended up adding in a little bit more carved pumpkin. Once it was sufficiently toned down, it was adhered to the card. I used the little heart cut out from the G in the sentiment sending smiles to add to the sentiment strip. I topped it off with a little bit of Nouveau glitter drops. And that completes this set of four cards using a fun and easy technique, lifting ink with stencils by Simon Says Stamp, Peony Bouquet, and floating leaves. As always, I appreciate your visit.